Hi, my students, are you with me? Shall we start our class? Today, my topic is again trauma, and it's a uh, rather traumatology too. In my previous lecture, we have discussed about the injury. I told you the injury is any harm whatsoever illegally caused to a person in body, mind, or reputation comes under injury. But being a medical man, we are concerned about mechanical injury. We are concerned about mechanical injury. And uh, mechanical injury is the injury produced by the mechanical means. How? Maybe you give a punch. Maybe you use some of the instrument or some of the heavy object. Maybe you use some kind of a sharp cutting weapon. Maybe you use some kind of a hard and blunt weapon, like a fist, like an iron rod. So when the patient reports to an ER, we put down our observations on a piece of paper that what kind of injury it is, what kind of a weapon has been used, and uh, what is the extent of the injury? What is the what are the dimensions of the injury? What is the depth of the injury? And looking at what kind of a weapon has been used, by looking at the features, you will put down your observation on a piece of paper. And when you put down your observation on a piece of paper, later on, the patient will go through with the wound debridement and aseptic dressing will be done. But initially, what observations you have put on a piece of paper, it was a medical legal report, and the medical legal report was a report being issued by the medical legal officer on the request of police officer about the injuries, about the weapon, about the time says uh, injury, etc., etc. And according to your observation, the punishment will be given. I told you, on that day that uh, the punishment given is up to the extent, depending on the weapon, depending on the region and uh, the depth of the injury or the severity of the injury. Maybe it's simply bleeding. Maybe the flap came over and bone is exposed. Maybe the bone has been fractured like a Hashima. And maybe the bone has been fractured and been dislocated from that part, etc., etc. Maybe the brain membrane is intact, but the skull has been fractured. Maybe the skull has been fractured, brain membrane has been ruptured, and the brain tissue came out, which is a permanent tissue and uh, which has been declared as the mirror. So we are concerned about the mechanical injuries. We are not concerned about that who has beaten, when he has beaten, why he has beaten. This is the job to be done by the police to make an inquiry. We will give our supporting document and on our supporting document, that will be. And being a medical man or a medical legal person, like I was just coming on my way, uh, I got a phone call that uh, such, such and such kind of uh, patient was uh, examined by us and later on he died. And the, re the report was, uh, you know, made uh, a reserve. Now, later on, we are declaring the case. So, I said, okay, uh, let me finish my class, then we will discuss over it, and then we'll declare. So on your observation, the case will take a left turn or will take a right turn. There are so many famous cases going on all around. I don't want to disclose uh, at this uh, place, but the thing is there are so many important cases which has already been appeared on a media are being investigated by by us and been declared by us. 
So talking about injury, any harm whatsoever illegally caused to person, boy, body, mind or reputation coming under injury, but these injuries, we are concerned about mechanical injuries and mechanical injuries are being classified into. The mechanical injuries are classified into two. One is closed wounds, other is open wounds, as the name suggests. The closed wounds, the wound is closed from top. There is no bleeding, there is no uh, extraction of the blood from the capillaries. There is no uh, injury visible, it is closed wound. The other side, we have an open wound and an open wound, as the name suggests, it is open and the injury, the skin is broken and it start bleeding and the blood start coming out. But we will have to look at the features of the wound, the margins of the wound, whether they are regular, they are irregular, they are inverted or they are averted, etc., etc., etc. So the injuries are classified into two. One is closed wound, other is open wound. The closed wound, we have two type of closed wounds. One is called contusion bruises, contusions or bruises. Number two is abrasions or grazes. The bruises are the extra position of blood from the capillaries due to the blood trauma. And when you give a punch to someone, he will develop a bruise over there, which is called a kneel or a kadma. And this bruise will give you an idea about many things we'll talk about. The other is abrasion or grazes. So we start with abrasion or grazes. Abrasion, in Urdu we call kharash. In English we call scratch. Whenever the skin comes in contact with a rough object, there will be a scratch. But this abrasion is any discontinuity into the superficial epithelium of the skin. It is any discontinuity into the superficial epithelium of the skin is called abrasion. Abrasion is of different types. But it is any discontinuity into the superficial epithelium of the skin called an abrasion. When you take a pen, common pen, and you just pass across the skin, it will produce an abrasion. Abrasion is any discontinuity into the superficial epithelium of the skin called abrasion. Abrasion will let you know the medical legal importance is, it tells you about the article used, it tells you about the direction of the injury. It tells you about time since injury. But basically, when you produce an abrasion or when skin comes in contact with a rough object, it produces abrasion. In abrasion, a smaller article is passed through the big size of the skin will make an abrasion. So. Definition says it is an injury confined to the superficial layer of the skin and uh, pure abrasion does not bleed and you will find that it will uh, leave no scar. It will uh, be, you know, healing without leaving any scar and uh, only the superficial epithelium of the skin is being damaged. Okay. So abrasion, the mechanism is when the skin comes in contact with any of the rough object, it produces rubbing, scraping, indenting, and the, with the skin, the abrasion will be there. The sharp object, like a pin, thorn, or maybe nails, will produce a scratch, and that scratch is an abrasion, and the rough surface, or a ground, or a, or a road, when a person, he will fall on the ground with a rough object, will, skin will come in contact with a rough object, will produce a graze. Now, the abrasion, when a smaller article, sharp article was taken across the big size of the skin, was an abrasion. But when a smaller size of the skin, either the cheek, either the elbow, 
will come into when you were young, you were trying to go on a bicycle, you used to fall on the ground. When the skin used to come in contact with the ground, there will be a big size of an abrasion and the skin is smaller in size. The rough object is bigger in size, will make a big size of an abrasion. You know, many lines will be there and that is called the graze. The graze has a great importance in a road traffic accident, in case of a rape or a xenobic jabber, and you differentiate a patient when you've taken history, you differentiate that what has happened to him, and maybe he has given, she has given resistance or not. So the graze is when the body, smaller part, will come in contact with the big size of the rough object is called. Then blunt object like cake with a boot, rope, stick, whip, teeth, a teeth marks will also make an imprint abrasion. When somebody will bite on a breast, on a cheek, or at the time of the rape, maybe when you bite your hand with your teeth, same kind of imprint abrasion will appear over that. Same kind of marking will they be there. And if it will create more pressure, then imprint abrasion will be there. Imprint abrasion will be there. By this way, you can even catch an accuse as well. When somebody is being strangulated, when somebody gets himself hanged and attempted suicide, it is a requirement that you need to bring a rope with the patient as well, or the dead body as well. You just match the fibers of the rope with the marking on the neck. So the ropes, the stag, the web, the teeth, all of them, they make, uh, uh, you know, markings over the body and uh, it will make a side, that side will show you abrasion or a graze. The types. The scratch or an abrasion, I told you, no problem. Uh, the types, the scratches are produced when object like finger, nail, pin, thorn is drawn through the skin. This is a scratch. This is an abrasion. This is showing you that it is more deeper in the beginning. Tailing will be there and it will tell you the direction. It will tell you the weapon used. It will tell you times of injury, etc., etc., etc. So the scratches are being produced by fingernails, pins, thorns. You will find that the characteristic will be, it will be clean area, and uh, you will find the layer of the skin at the termination. There will be tailing in it. Number two, when I told you a smaller size of the skin, like a cheek, like the elbow, like knee, when you fall on the ground and there's a big scratch called a graze, and the graze tells you about the direction of the injury, it tells you about the, what kind of uh, weapon was there, etc. So are caused by contact with a rough surface like ground road resulting in uh, usually irregular removal of the skin surface, also called as a brush, also called as a brush uh, type of an abrasion. Uh, it is being accompanied by a bruise also because the trauma has occurred to that area. This happens in road traffic accident, RTA, road traffic accident, or dragging a body on the ground, or glancing kick with a boot. And the medical legal importance is it tells you about the direction of the injury. It uh, tells you about the direction of the force. It tells you the uh, identification of uh, that material or that thing which is being used. Then we have a friction type of an abrasion are caused by indenting and rubbing the skin surface with the cord or rope are applied by trying or pulling. Like I told you in case of any strangulation, in case of a strangulation, some kind of a marking on the neck will appear. This is called a mirror image phenomena also. And in case of a strangulation, the uh, mark of the loop will be below the thyroid cartilage, it will be complete. 
and some kind of a same marking will appear. I told you that when you bite your skin with your teeth, you keep giving pressure for some time, same kind of an imprint marking will appear over that. You can catch a person with that and uh, just like you bite an apple, so ligature mark will be visible. Uh, blow with the lash, friction between the skin and edges of the garments, etc. So this is brain. Imprint abrasion is a stamp type of abrasion. When a child is passing the road and he's been hit by a car, some kind of a marking will appear over the head, and that is that will be the marking of the radiator of the car, which will just make an imprint abrasion. And this is like a tire mark, like imprint radiator, grill mark on the forehead, maybe teeth marks on the breast or the cheek, or maybe the ligature pattern or muzzle print imprint. Like when a person he attempted suicide, with he just fired with a point blank range with a jerk, the barrel of the gun, the muzzle end of the gun will hit the uh, temporal, right temporal, or if he is left handed, left temporal. So that marking will show that the imprint abrasion will be there and identification will be better in that. Then how you calculate, I told you that weapon has been, what kind of a weapon has been used will be clear. Maybe sharper article has taken across. Maybe he came on the ground, came with a rough object, big size of a rough object, and big size of an abrasion will be called as a craze will be there. This is another thing that how you calculate time since injury from that injury, and uh, maybe patient is lying, maybe patient is not giving you proper uh, you know, idea about it. Maybe the patient was injured, later he died, and when he got severely injured, how much time passed after that injury he died? You will just make a dating of an abrasion. And then the time since death, what we have studied in a death chapter, you will calculate time since death from that cooling of the body, postmortem, lividity, rigor mortis, digestive changes, etc., etc., etc. So dating of an abrasion means that how you calculate time since injury, in, when it is fresh, it will be bright red. When it will be having a red scab over it, it will be fresh. And after that, for 12 to 24 hours time, it will make a red scab over it. You will find after two to three days, it will turn to reddish brown in color, which your scratch, the scratch is converting into brownish in color and it will produce a plug over that and the reddish brown scab will appear in two to three days time. The underlying skin will shrink and in four to seven days time, the healing will be there in the from the periphery and it, there will be shrinking of the underlying skin and the healing will be complete in 10 to 12 days time. And in you know 12 to 14 days time, the scab will fall and will be pushed and uh, the injury will heal up without leaving any scar. This is simple injury. This injury will not even leave, even leave any scar. This is how you calculate time since injury and that is called dating of an abrasion. Difference between anti-mortem and post-mortem abrasion. Obviously the abrasion is when the person is alive, and uh, you will find that it will be brownish, it will be reddish, it will be having a scratch, it will have a, some kind of a fibrin will come over it, you will find some kind of a scab will come over it, you will find margins will be blurred due to vasoconstriction. And in case of a postmortem abrasion after death, if it has been created, it will be yellowish in color, margins will be sharp it will not go towards healing and repair. There will be no vital reaction, rubber, dola, kela, pela, there will be no uh, vital reaction will be there. And uh, you will find that the uh, signs of healing and repair will be there in life and uh, after death, there will be no. This is how we calculate abrasion is any discontinuity 
into the superficial epithelium of the skin called abrasion. And the types, abrasion, graze, imprint abrasion, etc. Number two is called bruise. The bruise, it is any, it is an extra visitation of blood from the capillaries due to the blood trauma. It is an extra visitation of blood from the capillaries due to the blood trauma when you give a punch. The person will feel pain and the bruise will appear, superficial bruise and a deep bruise it will appear later or maybe a couple of hours to some hours after. And like somebody met with an accident, he was saved, uh, sugar alhamdulillah, he was saved. And when you meet him after two days, you will find all the body is full of bruises, bluish in color, etc., etc. This is deep bruise. When you give a punch to someone and the bruise appears, this is called a superficial bruise and it is an extra visitation of blood from the capillary due to the blood trauma. And always, Blunt trauma is there like a punch, like a, you know, kick, like a, a fist, etc. This is a bruise. Bruise in Urdu we call nail, and in Arabic we call kadma. The diagnostic features are that uh, diffuse margins will be there. There will be no sharp margins. Diffuse margins will be there, and reddish area will be there. There will be pain and tenderness will be there and you will find the epidermis may or may not show damage. Uh, size varies with the pinhead to extensive hematoma, big size uh, of collection will be there. But basically it is an extra visitation of blood from the capillaries due to the blood trauma. The capillaries, they get damaged, they start bleeding and under the skin, the blood will get collected and this will show you the red color, or maybe it will show you maroon color, maybe it will show you blue color, maybe it will show you green color, maybe it will show you like uh, yellow color, etc. Why? We'll come to that. So there are different type of uh, there are different type of uh, terminologies and in which extra visitation of blood is being collected, and depending on that, if there are small, small, small uh, markings. And maybe on the face, in case of uh, uh, strangulation, uh, they will be strong, small. These are called petechial hemorrhages. These are also called tardy spots. Was invented by a French policeman. He his name was Tardy, and these this is because of the increased capillary pressure. Stasis from the front, rupture of the capillary endings produces the petechial hemorrhages. Maybe chymosis is more then a pinhead is smaller than the bruise, but it is having small, small markings like a old person, you will find maybe he got a hemorrhage uh, under, uh, uh, under the skin on some area. Bruise is an extra visitation of blood, as you know, small, small. If small, small bruises are there, like uh, if somebody has tried to kill someone, or maybe child was uh, smoother, and the small finger markings will be, these are called contusions. Just like uh, petechial hemorrhages, chymosis, bruises, hematoma, there are small, small bruises called contusions, like on a breast, there will be marking of the fingers will be there, this is called the contusions. And a bit larger, more than five millimeter size, called as a bruise. And uh, then hematoma is a collection of the blood in a pocket, Maybe you give a head injury, the, there will be black eye and there will be a hematoma or maybe collection of the blood in that area. So these are the different types. Now, <clears throat> can be causes can be because of few of the diseases as well. When a patient is being reported to you and you examine the patient, like for example, a person got a punch. When he got a punch, there is a corresponding injury on the, on the, you know, under the lips and the one of the teeth has been broken. We never decide by ourselves. We never decide radiology by ourselves. We never decide gynecology by ourselves. We send the patient to the expert and we want an expert opinion from that. Maybe a dentist or maybe odontologist will say 
that the dental caries were there and he was the dental hygiene now was not proper and the teeth was already diseased no doubt he got an injury but was broken because of that so we just copy his opinion and we declare according to that then there are few of the cases when uh, the disease is there like a purpura like a scurvy like leukemia some kind of a skin diseases are there which produces some kind of a chymosis or maybe this in case of a trauma when you give a blow with the any of the blunt object like a lathi like a face like a cake like a stone like a brick or firm grasping uh, of a weak person will produce a bru uh, this bruise over the mechanism when you produce a sudden pressure due to the mechanical impact causing capillaries and means to rupture resulting in accumulation of blood we need the skin skin possessing elasticity and plasticity of a greater resistance so do not break and uh, there will be collection of blood under that i gave you a very good definition it is an extra resection of blood from the capillaries due to the blunt trauma what are the factors there are different factors which are uh, important for making a bruise for appearing a bruise that the condition of the body and the type of the tissue bruise may occur readily easily extensively in a less tissue like uh, where there is a less supportive tissue the bruise will appear more easily over there and if the person he is uh, a normal person you can make a bruise very easily in uh, over him but a person who is a wrestler or a boxer or a, you know uh, doing bodybuilding he has a very good supported tissue the bruise cannot be made easily there are ectopic bruises the bruises may not be present necessarily at the site of impact <coughs> excuse me <coughs> the extravasic blood may move along the tissue plane and will look for some kind of a pocket or some kind of a and because the gravity shifting when the hit will be over the head the black eye will be there and it makes the gravity shifting and it will be at a distant to some uh, you know to, to the blow after some area where there is a pocket for that the examples blow on the forehead or a fall on a fall on a vertex will make a black eye fracture of head of the femur later aspect of the lower thigh <clears throat> blow on the outer part of the thigh bruise around the knee so it will be going with a gravitational type of uh, uh, pull and will then age is important uh, in case of a very young children and very old people you can make a bruise more easily because they have a less fat less supportive tissue the sex so in a female you can make a, a bruise more easily and the vascularity of the part of the part which is more vascularized the bruise can be made more easily in simple words uh, the where there is a less supportive tissue the bruise can be made more easily in a fair skin bruise is more obvious and in a dark skin it appears but it is not that clear and so complexion is very important as well presence of the disease i told you that bruise can be made more easily when the cognitive factors or deficiencies or blood dyskinesis or diminished platelets are there in the site of injury i told you where the um, where there is a less supportive tissue now dating of the bruise the bruise when the bruise has been produced you can calculate the most simple way it it can be done by the color change and color change is because of the hemoglobin which the blood which came out hemoglobin which came out conversion of hemoglobin into hematidin hemocytidin and the bilirubin will be uh, showing you the color of the of the bruise and uh, like there are two type of thing one is uh, macroscopic examination by color change gross and the microscopic examination that is a blood blood pigments you will just put under the microscope mechanism blood due to disintegration of the rbcs by hemolysis 
uh, will go release hemoglobin that breaks down into hemocytin, hemocytin, bilirubin by the action of the histocytes and tissue enzymes. This will be. Good question. The slides are not moving well. Um, Musa. Sidra Musa has uh, written that the slides are not moving. I think it's moving in my uh, computer and my, uh, but we will try to shoot out. Well, so the microscopic changes, macroscopic changes from the appearance of the bruise, how you decide it is enough. When it is fresh, first day, it will be red in color. Next day, it will turn to bluish in color. On third day, it will turn to you know, maroonish in color. And uh, the fourth day, it will turn to brownish in color. Fifth to sixth day, it will go to greenish in color. And uh, seven to 10 day or uh, nine day, it will turn to yellow in color because of conversion to blue ribbon. And the 13, 12 to 14 day or 12, 13 to 15 day, it will turn to, is, is, it will be phagocytosis and all will be removed and uh, it will come to the normal, right? So this is how you make the, and the microscopic changes, hemocytin within macrophages, not less than 24 to 48 hours, hemocytin within macrophages, not less than three days, bilirubin or extracellular, not less than seven days. So when it turns to yellowish in color, seven to nine days have passed. When it is fresh, it is red in color. And, uh, there are different types of, uh, because of the injuries, because of the disease, because of uh, a small, small marking like a potential hemorrhage or a love bite, or uh, maybe some kind of a small, small collection will be there, or maybe big size of a bruises will be there. But I tell you, I tell you one thing, that bruise is being produced in a living person. If the person has died, you cannot make a bruise over him. You will find in a dead body post-mortem lividity after death discoloration of the skin. The bruise, it is within life. Inflammation, signs of inflammation will be there. In case of uh, post-mortem lividity, signs of inflammation will not be there. In case of a bruise, the margin will be diffuse. In case of a post-mortem lividity, margin will be sharp and clear. In case of a bruise, there will be color change. In the case of uh, post-mortem lividity, the color change is not there only. It is start appearing in one to two hours, make patches in four to six hours, get complete in 12 hours, stay for, and it will get fixed after 12 to 14 hours, except contact threatening, which is touching the ground, the body part, which are touching the ground. Over there, there will be no Postmortem lividity, my postmortem lividity margins will be clear and the bruise, the margin will be diffuse. Postmortem lividity, signs of inflammation and slight edema will be there. And in, it is in life, it is painful as well. And in case of a postmortem lividity after death, there will be no inflammation, there will be no, you know. So, this is about the bruise. And you have to differentiate bruise with the postmortem lividity. What are the questions? Everyone, it's moving. Yes, it's perfectly fine, right? Well, the slides are moving. I think it's a problem with you, with your PC somewhere. Well, so now there were closed wounds. The skin were closed from the top. And now we come to the open wounds. As the name suggests, the skin is open from the top. Bleeding is going on. And in open wounds, we have incised wounds. We have uh, lacerated wound. We have stab wound. We have firearm injuries. Again, the closed wounds, as the name suggests, there were only in the skin, like a bruise as an abrasion. And uh, in case of open wounds, we were having, uh, you know, bleeding going on, as the name suggests, the wound is open. And that can be either with a sharp cutting weapon 
and that will be one type called incise wound. Maybe it will be by a fist, iron rod, or something. When you hit with the pressure, the skin will be broken. And when the skin will be broken, that will be called as a lacerated wound. And maybe stab wound when a pointed weapon will pierce inside the body. It will be, an, uh, you know, uh, having a stab wound. And when it will pass through and through, it will pass through and through, it will be called as a perforating injury. And the fourth kind of injury is a firearm injury. In my next class, that will be mechanical injury or the uh, traumatology three. We will be going through with the firearm injuries. And again, it's your duty being a doctor to tell the police who's standing outside to what kind of a weapon has been used, what is the direction of the fire, and what is the distance fired. You have to mention to the police and uh, how we will we'll talk about it. Now the open wounds. Number one is incise wound. This incise wound, it is by a sharp cutting weapon. Maybe it is a light cutting weapon. Maybe it is a heavy cutting weapon. Most of the time, when a person, he want to divert the case or maybe a policeman, he want to show his efficiency or maybe some of the guard will try to show his efficiency in case of a decoratory, I tried my best. He will produce injuries over his body. And these are called self-inflicted injuries. Well, these are called self-inflicted injuries. And these are being produced over the body on an approachable part. And they are not uh, corresponding with the clothes. He will remove the shirt and he will make an injury with a light cutting weapon, like a blade, like uh, maybe some kind of a small scissors, etc. Sharp cutting margins will be there. And incise wound, it is cut, slash, slice, wound caused by impact of sharp edge object, or maybe linear or pointed. Maybe instruments can be knives, razors, blades, daggers, or maybe glass, metal, edges of the paper glass, papers or glass, etc. And mechanism, when you pr uh, put a pressure uh, and concentrate a force and movement of the instrument, it make a sharp Sharpness is there, it will cut that part of the body and that will produce an open wound. The margins appearance, how it will look like when you will just look at the injury, how it will look like. The margin will be neat and clean cut. The breadth will be more than the size of the weapon because when you give an injury, typical injury is like a surgical wound. When you just give a nick with a scalper, the skin goes away. So the breadth of the injury is more than the size of the weapon. Margins are neat and clean cut. Margins are averted. No contamination all around. No bruising all around, etc., etc. So the sharp weapon has been used. You will find that the shape of the weapon will be clear. Sharpness of the edge will be there. Manner of the infliction will be clear to you. And uh, the tissue involved will be. Diagnostic features, you will look at the shape. You look at the margin, you will look at the edges, you look at the angles, you will look at the base that I told you, margins are neat and clean cut, averted, breath is more than the size of the weapon, and there's no contamination around, and there's no bruising all around. You will look at the dimension, profuse bleeding will be there. And in case of self-inflicted injuries, I told you when a light cutting weapon has been used, when it is on approachable parts, not corresponding with the clothes, these are called self-inflicted injuries. There are a few injuries called self-suffered injuries or friendly wound, which is being made with a, in a contract with your friend that you please put some injuries over my body. So the case will be divert or you will involve some of the innocent person uh, in, in, in that particular case or you divert the case, etc. So the tailing will be there. Most of the time in these self inflicted injuries, friendly injuries or friendly wounds or contract wounds, the tailing is there. But in case of a sharp cutting weapon, tailing, gradual decrease in depth of the wound is there towards terminal end and superficial wound involve only skin. This is called tailing of the wound. This is called tailing of the wound. The close on may correspond with the wound when it is homicidal in nature, but when it is uh, suicidal in nature, it will not correspond with the close. 
the primarily cuts are small, superficial, multiple found at the commencement of the deep uh, uh, wound and margins in the deep cut, like in case of a suicidal cutthroat, in case of uh, blackmailing, uh, you just, uh, the person will just use some kind of object and will uh, put on the wrist and uh, maybe on the neck will use some kind of a knife and uh, that will produce hesitation cuts will be there and that will be clear that this is not a homicidal attempt this is a suicidal attempt now suicidal cut throat and homicidal cut throat in simple words i'll just brief you that uh, in suicidal cut throat person is already in tension anxiety worries the person is already the questions then the person is already in tension, anxiety, worries. He will just uh, take that part of the house which is, there is no thoroughfare. He will use anything available in the house like a kitchen knife. And you know, kitchen knife is so blunt. You cannot even cut a tomato or you cannot come even, cut even a nose. So um, kitchen knife will be used because in a suicide, he will not go to the market and he will use anything available in the house and he will use a kitchen knife and they will be, if he's a right-handed man, he will start from left downwards and multiple hesitation cuts will be there. Maybe one deep cut will be there, one side carotid arteries will be cut and the person, he will write a farewell letter, he will put under the paperweight, will close the doors, close the windows, everything from inside and he will attempt a suicide and the, the uh, you know, weapon will be firmly grabbed in the hand and the facial expression will remain same. This is called cadaveric spasm. What he was having at the time of uh, atomic suicide, the, he will be firmly grasping the weapon in his hand and this is called cadaveric spasm will be there. In case of a homicidal cutthroat, the person, there will be some motive behind it. And uh, in this, he was depressed. He was having some tension. He was having some anxiety some anxiety factors were there. And when you will do the postmortem, you will go for a psychological type of autopsy. You will take an interview from the relatives as well. But in case of a homicidal, the person will bring sharp cutting weapon from the market and the windows doors will be open. No farewell letter will be there. Some kind of a defense wound will be there over the body on the hands and you will find that one deep cut will be there down upwards and both side carotid arteries will be cut. No hesitation, wounds will be there. This is the difference between homicidal and a suicidal cutthroat. Cadaveric spasm, I told you, is there in case of a suicidal cutthroat because the person, you know, cadaveric spasm, the mechanism is not known, but when the person, he dies in tension, anxiety, like in drowning, he will have a cadaveric spasm and the person, he will die. Uh, on the front, he will have a cadaveric spasm. So when the mind or the brain was working in, in a tense uh, situation, like in a boxing, he will die somewhat like this facial expression will remain same when, when he will be knocked out and he will have an injury and he will die at the same place, etc., etc. Then we have a defense wounds. Uh, as the name suggests, defense wounds, these are the uh, wounds which are being, uh, you know, uh, take taken in a defense and the person who is att attacking with the weapon, if the person will try to save himself and uh, maybe blood, maybe sharp uh, weapon, it will be on the hands, it will be on the palm, etc. And it will indicate whether it was a homicide or uh, the person was conscious at that time or sort of fabricated. I told you, self inflicted I told you that maybe this is uh, being produced on the body in a contact or on his own approachable parts. So it's not corresponding with the clothes. And this will be uh, self-inflicted injuries to divert the case. And the murderer, uh, they misguide the investigators. Maybe they accuse of, uh, to accuse police when the person, he comes out from the lockup, he want to uh, tell the media that I have been beaten, I have been, you know, kicked or I have been tortured, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, then we have a stab wound. Any question? No. Okay. Uh, am I glassy? Well, then after the incised wound, we have a stab wound. A stab wound is being produced with the uh, sharp pointed weapon is being driven across the skin like a screwdriver. When is being pierced inside the body, the depth of the wound being the greater dimension 
over there in case of uh, uh, sharp cutting weapon, sharp cutting can be in knife, one side edged, it will produce a wedge shape injury, one side is sharp, other side is blunt, and uh, maybe dagger has been used, but dagger is a hunger that both sides are being sharp, a spindle shape injury will be there, both sides will be sharp, and now the stab wound, when the screwdriver is being pierced inside, like a knife, like a dagger, like a needle, like an ice break, like uh, scissors, like uh, screwdrivers, etc. When the penetrating injury will be there, when the weapon, after passing through the tissue, open to some part of the body, wound of entry, but no wound of exit will be there. And uh, when the weapon passes through and through, through and through, this is called perforating injury and wound of entry is there, wound of exit is there, causative weapon is being known to you, death will be more than the size of the weapon. When you withdraw it, the injury will be smaller than the size of the weapon because of the elasticity. This is most, most, most common, that lacerated wound is being produced by hard and blunt weapon. When the person is being hit by a car, moving car, there will be a lacerated wound. When you hit someone over the head with a fist, it will be having a lacerated wound and if the person uh, is playing football and he's been hit on the tibia and uh, even he was not wearing a shin guard the, the toes were there and will produce a lacerated wound maybe uh, you know a skull is very hard a scalp can, comes in contact between the iron rod and the skull and the skin will be broken the wound caused by crushing, scratching, compressing, or tearing of the skin, underlying tissue or organ causes application of blunt force. This is a causative weapon will be blow with the fist, with the iron rod, with the uh, stick, or with the punch, or with the stone, etc. Or in road traffic accidents, the skin will be broken when it will get an injury it will be broken, it will not be cut. The car is a hard and blunt object when it will be hit with a bumper or with the bonnet of the car. That area will be broken and margins will be irregular, torn, inverted, hair capillaries will be broken, contamination will be there, bruising will be all around. This, these are the features of lacerated wound again. Lacerated wound, maybe you use uh, iron rod and you hit over the head and the scalp get pressed between two hard objects, a fist and a skull, the scalp will be broken, margin will be irregular, torn, inverted, hair capillaries will be broken, contamination will be there, bruising all around, hairs, all these things will be, you know, fine broken. You are not clear, you will just uh, use a magnifying lens, try to find out because on the skull where there is a hard bone underneath, when there is a hard bone underneath like a tibia, like a uh, head, like uh, maybe shoulder, when the hard bone is underneath, then uh, you know it will be pressed between two hard or it will be broken and the margin will be irregular, torn, inverted. There are different type of a lacerated wound. One is called split laceration when you hit some part of the body where beneath there is a hard bone underneath, then the skin will be broken. When the skin will be broken, margins will be irregular, torn, inverted. I told you that you will use a magnifying lens. This is a viral question. You will use a magnifying lens. It's not clear to you. You will ask the dresser to shave the hair. You look at the margins, the margins will be irregular, torn, inverted, etc. But in few of the cases, this lacerated wound on a hard part, this lacerated wound when there is a bone underneath, like a TB, I told you, like a skull, I told you, the lacerated wound looks like an incised wound, like has been cut straight looks like an incised wound, but it is not an incised wound. It is a lacerated wound. You will examine it properly. There are few of the body parts like uh, maybe axilla, like a scrotum, where there is a leg tissue, where there is an elastic tissue, lacerated wound. Sometimes uh, 
over there it looks like it is a lacerated wound but basically it's not as wound in size wound if it is on the scrotal region or on an axilla it will show the margin irregular looking like a lacerated wound but it is not a lacerated wound it is an incised wound so is there are variations like a hard part resemble like an incised wound and a soft part incised wound looks like a lacerated wound i hope you are with me basically this is a topic which is a, of an interest of boys mostly and they have more better observation and they know more about about it it's a daily you know life problems and when you will be in er you will find all these kind of patients reporting to you in few of the cases people they lie and in our forensic they say you keep your eyes and ear open and mouth shut so we keep our mouth shut and we never argue we never make a controversy we never discuss we never fight with the patient we just put down our observation and that's it and uh, our observations are 99.9 percent .9%, you know because we are giving them uh, medical support and you know forensic it is a branch of medical science which deals with an application of medical knowledge for the purposes of law when the law requires our knowledge when the law requires our support we give them support we never go out of our way we are in an er we are in a ward we are in a hospital patient is being sent to us patient either critically injured comes directly to us we inform the police we take care of the patient or either the patient comes through the police station and we put down our observation we just mention that how much time we make a dating of the wound we make uh, the causative uh, weapon we just declare uh, what is the extent we declare what type of injury it is like uh, i told you that uh, in case of a shajja and kafifa uh, mudia hashima manakala amma or the mera well so lacerated wound is produced by these 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 weapons and the car the train and when the person when he is being hit by any of the rough hard blunt object lacerated wound will be produced in the body the diagnosis will be made by looking at the margins edges angles depth tables are broken blood vessels are crushed skin is been having flapping there are different type of uh, uh, different type of a lacerated wound one is called split laceration when you hit with a iron rod beneath there is a hard bone under that the skin will be broken margins irregular torn inverted hair capillary is broken contamination bruising this is called split laceration maybe you are passing and there is some kind of a nail on the wall and will just take out your skin and when the skin will be taken out this will produce a tear and the tear again margins are irregular torn inverted hair capillary broken contamination bruising etc etc will be there maybe after split laceration we have a tear we have over stretching when a person is being hit by a car like this and the skin will have a elasticity will go up to some extent but after that that will be broken because of the over stretching this is called the over stretching and the margins will be again irregular torn inverted hair capillary is broken and the last one is called the evolution when the skin will be grinded like this and when the skin will have a pressure and this elasticity but it will slip it will go towards you know evolution this is called the evolution again margins are irregular torn inverted etc etc so over stretching of the skin there is a localized pressure with a pull with an increase until tearing occurs producing a flap indicating direction of the offending object impact or it is tangential so evolution grinding evolution tearing of the skin is there cut lacerations when a heavy and sharp edge weapon is being used etc uh, like a chopper or like a kulhari or a hatchet is being used uh, will make a cut laceration and but margin will be irregular torn and inverted in inshallah in my next class i will be going through with the make the firearm injury firearm injury is a bit more 
that was um, then the mechanical injury and i told you the boys they they like uh, this subject and their mind is open and they are accepting everything and uh, firearms uh, especially the girls they uh, don't have an interest in that and they teaching them or not teaching them is equal you know they just keep their pores closed etc etc any question about about this uh, Can you please repeat the difference between incision and laceration? Well, um, uh, what's the name? Well, uh, somebody has asked me a question. What is the difference between and uh, uh, incised wound and uh, and a lacerated wound? I told you, incised wound is being produced by sharp cutting weapon. Margins are neat and clean cut. breadth is more than the size of that's another story right cutting weapon and the heavy cutting weapon right cutting weapon like a blade or a scalper etc and typical example is a surgical wound when you just clean you just you paint and you give an incision with a scalper and 0336 you just go and uh, 9693 the, the thing is that the margins are neat and clean cut averted breadth is more than the size of weapon this is by sharp cutting by the hairs and capillaries and neat and clean cut profuse bleeding is there but in case of a lacerated wound it is been produced by hard and blunt weapon and uh, the injury is been produced by force and the skin is been not cut it is been broken and when it is in broken you will find uh, uh, the margins are irregular torn inverted in case of uh, uh, incised wound it was averted in case of uh, lacerated wound it is inverted and uh, you have to make a wound abridgment here capillaries are broken and when you look under the microscope you will find that the thing will be damaged the thing will be damaged just like uh, the hairs will be damaged and uh, this is the difference between so the dead person has any wound or bruise and it has a body kept for a few days will be wound uh, will his wound or bruise heal no look when the person is alive inflammation is maujood when the person is alive inflammation is there body mechanisms are been working but when the person dies everything is stopped at the same place at the same time at the same a uh, stage uh, it will never heal up it will never develop so i was giving you an example that a person got critically injured on that day he remained alive 3 days so 3 days uh, healing and repair dating of the wound will be there he died on this day on 10th now on 14th we got the dead body from the jungle <clears throat> was lying unattended so time since that time since injury plus time since death will give you an idea about it but your question is that the wounds or the bruises they go towards healing or not no at all it stop at the same time any other question any other question we are just finishing our class i think on 19 we have a class we will talk about talking about the firearm injuries and very interesting very interesting and uh, see you on 19 thank you very much okay sir allah hafiz